today we are honored to have uh, Professor uh, Xavier Gill to give us a talk on the influence of the use of a current loop in the grid forming control on the small signal stability. So now let me uh, quickly introduce Xavier first before he gave this talk. So uh, Professor uh, Xavier Gill, uh, Gill received his PhD from University of Leo in 1992. 1992 and joined the laboratory of electrical ele engineering and power electronics in 1993. He has been professor in, uh, in a call central of Leo since 2002. First, he worked on modeling and control of power electronic systems. And then he studied the integration of distributed generation and especially uh, renewable energy in power systems. So nowadays he's more focused on the integration of high voltage power electronics converters in the transmission system. He is leading the development of an experimental facility composed of actual power electronics converters interfacing with vir virtual real-time simulation grids. He is involved in a C-grid group and served projects about uh, power, power electronics on the grid within European projects and a large number of projects with French electrical uh, utilities. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Xavier, for uh, making this presentation, especially at very late time at your side. So now it's all your floors. Please go ahead. Thank you. So oh, thank you for um, the introduction. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank Unify to give me the opportunity to present the work that we have done uh, in the last year about uh, weight forming control. And uh, today I will. Uh, present this work uh, on uh, the question of uh, the influence of the current loop, uh, uh, the use of current loop uh, in the case of uh, grid forming control and, more, uh, and mainly on the question of small cell stability. So, uh, as you know, there are lots of documents which has been published on the topic of the grid forming control. Uh, in, in Europe, we have some uh, doc documents, uh, documents uh, uh, from uh, um, uh, European network of, of TSOs. Uh, then uh, there are also some other documents from uh, uh, from in Germany, in UK, and also in USA. Of course, there are also some documents about grid forming control. There are European projects, so many many things about grid forming control. But what we, what we can say is that none of them give a very precise definitions. So. Uh, one common ca characteristic about grid forming control is to say it is a voltage behind an impedance, but of course this definition is not enough. Uh, so, uh, of course, well, in, standard, in standard situation, you could say it's enough, but when in most of the application, it is in grid connected connection, and of course the voltage source is a bit driven in order to control the active power. So in fact, the grid forming control for me is really closely linked with the question of Power synchronization control, uh, which is a kind of common characteristic of all the grid forming control that we are studying. So, of course, in this kind of control, the power, the active power control has two aims: controlling the active power, of course, and in the same time, synchronizing the converter to the grid. So, um, from this principle is it is possible to derive two main types of control one with a current loop and the other with no current loop we will see that uh, later and uh, the main objective of, the, of this presentation is to inve investigate the impact of this current loop on the small signal stability of a system in which integrates uh, grid forming converters so here is the, the outline of the presentation so then the the presentation, uh, the, the introduction first. Uh, then I will um, uh, explain kind of open loop control to be very precise about the definition of what I uh, want to explain about what I call the direct voltage control and the question of grid forming with current loop. Then uh, I will remind uh, quickly um, well, some very classical uh, grid forming control. I will not uh, insist too much about that, just to have that uh, in mind clearly. And the uh, main focus would be the enhancements of the system stability with GFN as to see what is uh, the influence of the current loop or not. And then, of course, I will conclude. So, uh, first of all, uh, the well, the model that I will use uh, for the uh, for the converter is very simple, just a voltage source uh, 
and uh, I suppose that there is a in this in the, in the control uh, we we start from uh, signal uh, V M star uh, ABC and we suppose that the average value of the modulated voltage V M ABC is equal to its its value here <laughs> and then. Um, uh this is uh, we assimilate uh, this the uh, the converter to uh, voltage source behavior we will take into account the delay we will see that later but not more than that so we can represent uh, the system with a uh, very simple way with uh, this uh, very simple uh, uh, steady state modeling and from that we can derive uh, deduce uh, the really well known um, uh, formula. I will uh, use uh, mainly uh, this one to uh, to say, okay, uh, we know that uh, the active power depends on uh, Vm, Ve, which is the uh, equivalent, and of course the sum of x to six g and the different of, of angle. It is very well known. I don't see it on this point. It's extremely classical. So um, from that, uh, well, we have phaser. Uh, well, we start from phase because uh, model, then we will use a dynamic in MT model. So we have delta, which has a phase angle, and we can we know that we when switch from delta to theta, theta are here the time domain angle. Of course, in the control, we will use only time domain angle. So what we will uh, see for the open loop for first that. Uh, we want again. We we are using this formula. While well, we of course we will everything. I didn't uh, explain that everything is all is uh, in per unit. Uh, so uh, the voltage is considered around one per unit. The, we have uh, this formula. We have different rho as the different of angle. And uh, if we define the p star are the active power reference for the active power, and uh, rho star will be a reference angle, angle for rho, and uh, again theta m star also reference angle from theta for theta, we can calculate very easily. Uh, at the end, we want to calculate theta m, which is a uh, which is the theta m star, which is the angle of the modulated voltage. So it's very easy here from. P star, we take the formula, we invert the formula, and then we have uh, rho star, which is deduced from P star, and uh, theta m, which is deduced from uh, rho. Also. Uh, we need an estimate of theta. We will uh, use a very rough estimate, very uh, basic estimate. We integrate one per unit, and we have an estimate of theta. And then we have this very basic control, uh, which well, it's, uh, with a theoretical control, it wouldn't work in the real life, but just to, to have a clear understanding and to um, identify the model of the system. You see here, we have V star, which, again, which is the reference of the active power. From that, we, we define the, the angle. And then let's see what happens in case of a step of V star. Um, well, if we have a step of P star, we have had a damping resistance. I, I didn't uh, insist too much on, on that. So, of course, we can see that depending on the, uh, the grid impedance, uh, so the short ratio, the gain is modified, which was quite expected because we again the, the gain of the system uh, is uh, depend on XA, XA is a connection impedance and EG the grid impedance. So. Uh, we can use, we will use this uh, very, very simple model later. So uh, what is interesting, uh, so well, we can also, we know that we can, uh, to the control, we can add also a virtual impedance. So it's a more general, uh, more general uh, control, but it doesn't change anything. Uh, here it just, I mean that XV is not a real impedance, but just an impedance which is added by the control. We can have the same kind of, uh, of a model with Vm, Ve, and Ec, which is G plus Xv, to take into account the virtual impedance. So uh, here, we, are, we have just seen something where we are just acting on the voltage. Uh, however, we know that in a lot of control, we want to integrate the current loop, which is the easiest way to limit the current in case of short circuit. Well, this is very well known. So how can we integrate this current loop in the control that we, we have developed, uh, we have presented uh, just before? First thing is to 
uh, well, if we have a current loop, of course, we need a current reference. So let's start from this very basic phasor model. So we know that if, well, V uh, is an internal uh, control, so of course we can, we know what is this voltage. Vg can be measured, and from the difference between V and Vg, and if we divide by Xa plus Xv, which is uh, Xa uh, identity at the beginning, but Xa is a connection dependence, it's constant. Xv is also its control, is, uh, is, is constant. So it's possible to have an estimate of Ig from this very simple uh, formula. In fact, so what we will do is to set the reference Ig star equal to this estimate. So you, in uh, of course, the control will be implemented in, D, in DQ. Then in DQ, um, we will have uh, this, uh, this model is implemented in DQ. You have it here. We need to add a filter uh, to, to help the uh, stability, uh, mainly in case of a weak grid. And then from that, we have a classical current loop, or would say the same current loop that we could um, find in a, in a grid following converter. So uh, now let's see what happens if uh, we apply uh, the same kind of uh, step, but now when integrating the current loop. So what we can see here is that we have uh, done exactly the same uh, same event. We apply step on piston, and we can see that in fact we have nearly the same behavior. Of course, if we are, if we have a, a zoom on the very beginning of the transient. Of course, the transient is not the same exactly, but in a first approximation, we can consider that um, this model can be used also uh, for, uh, for the, the identification of the, of the system. So uh, we have uh, to sum up this uh, first part of the presentation. We have, uh, we have shown here that we have a direct voltage control. Uh, we, again, we want to control the active power, we have P star, we calculate the angle, and then from this direct voltage control, we have, uh, we apply the, this, this direct voltage control to uh, the modulation here. So you see that there is a direct, volt, direct control between V star and the uh, modulated voltage by the converter. If we compare uh, with the second control, where we have added the current loop, this scheme is exactly the same. But you see that the link between the modulated voltage here and the VSR is not straight anymore because we have we have this case static model and this current loop. So this link is broken now, and we will see uh, the influence of that. Uh, in the following uh, 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 slides. So um, we will uh, have these two uh, types of uh, converter, the uh, control, sorry. One is called voltage control grid forming, and the other, the other is called current control grid forming, VCGFM on one hand, CCGFM on the other hand. And what we have seen that we, uh, we can assimilate the behavior of both systems to this very simple model here, uh, which is drawn from the uh, from the static model of the system. Of course, we know that it's not an extremely accurate model, obviously. But if we don't go too fast uh, for the for the active power control, this model is enough, and from that we can derive derive uh, the current the the convert the sorry the controller. Of the active power. So now it's time to close the loop because, of course, it's not possible to control the active power with, a, with such a simple control. So we will uh, recall here some basics about grid forming control and calculate uh, the grid for the, the, the converter, uh, the, the controller, sorry, for this grid forming control. So again, I start from this model. So if I want to control the active power, the very basic uh, solution, of course, is to add an integrator here. It's very, very well known. It's very basic in terms of control. Um, and uh, well, if I modify a little bit this, uh, you see this, this scheme, I have this scheme, 
which is in fact a very well-known group control. So this is uh, the way I explain the origin of the, uh, the group control here, already starting from scratch, starting from the, uh, from the, the system. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, this uh, this scheme again, which is very well. Known. Of course, we can add a filter and we default if we want. Uh, but this is really the very basic scheme of the group control. So, uh, as you know, um, in steady states, uh, all the frequencies are, are the same. So, uh, the grid frequency is omega g. Omega m will be equal to omega g, but what we know is that omega g is not always equal to one. It means that if here uh, this is not one, it means that we have this is not zero, then it means that p star is not equal to p. Well, we can have it here, uh, and this is a very well known uh, frequency group control. In fact, uh, as we can see here, we have a quite uh, uh, Problem here. Well, the problem with this type of control, and I, I have to say that I don't know why there are so many people who are uh, using that because, in fact, we are uh, mixing two different uh, points. The question of AP, which is a, fre a frequency uh, group control, it means that it is linked with the system, like the big system, uh, because we know that in, in, a, in a frequency group, we cannot choose any kind of, uh, of value uh, well, to coordinate all, the, all this value. And on the other hand, uh, MP is, um, uh, is uh, of course, in the closed loop dynamic of the active of power. So it modified the, the internal loop. So well, if we want to avoid this problem, it's very easy. It's, it's just enough to um, uh, replace the one which is here we can replace it with the estimate of an omega g that we know that the omega m will be equal to omega g in steady state and then will be equal to omega g. Uh, the estimate of the omega g it means that in steady state we will always have that m equal to zero. Then we can choose mp with respect with uh, the internal loop of uh, requirements for the active form. And if we want to add a group control, of course we can add an external group control, just to decouple the two functionalities, the frequency group control on one hand and the closed loop uh, control for the active form. Another solution to um, to uh, avoid this problem of uh, p equal to p, uh, to, to have p equal to p star is to add a second integrator. We know that in steady state, again, omega n is constant. It means that the, the, the input, of course, is, is equal to zero. So, um, the problem with that is that we have a, a very nice oscillator. It's not possible to do that. A very simple way to avoid uh, this uh, uh, well, this oscillator is to add a damping coefficient. This is a classical PI or IP controller uh, here. Uh, so it's possible to design KI and KD. We have a second order system. It's possible to design to for a given value of the requirements for uh, the dynamics of the system. However, however, most of the time we assimilate this integrator here to an initial value, an initial effect. It's true that from a mathematical, mathematical, mathematical point of view, this integration uh, is equivalent to an initial effect. So it's possible to do so. Of course, it's uh, well. It's it's not the same scheme as uh, 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 a very well known uh, virtual syn synchronous machine, but we have we have seen that in fact it is equivalent. I will not insist too much. Just I think it's if we want to derive a controller, it's just to say we can speak about a PI controller as 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 you can see here. So now the th the thing is a little bit different because here uh, at the beginning here we have two degrees of freedom. We have a second order, so it's possible to place all the, all the poles of the system, two poles of the system. It's very uh, classical in terms of control. Now, H is given from an external requirements. We want to have H equal to one, H equal to five, and many, uh, I don't know. Um, so uh, we have lo lost a degree of freedom, and then we only have one single de degree of freedom, uh, which is KD. 
which can uh, modify the damping of the system. But we cannot control the uh, response time anymore. So we will uh, calculate KD with a criteria on damping of the system. And then the response time cannot be controlled and it will depend on H on H. Of course, if H is, in, is, in, is increasing, the response time increase also. So, uh, well, just uh, some few simulation results here. As you can see here, H equal to five, then equal to one, sign. Um, and then, uh, well, 2.5 once again, and we have designed uh, the KD to get uh, uh, dumping uh, again, equal to one. Uh, what you what you can see on, on this very uh, first uh, uh, simulation results you have seen here CC and VCG and really you can hardly see the, the difference the two curves are nearly a super a superimposed it means that really with this kind of event we have nearly the same the same behavior with the current loop or without the current loop. Um, let's see what happens if the HJ is modified. Uh, in fact, I, I didn't mention that we have designed the controller for HJ equal to zero. It means that we have, a, we uh, suppose that we have a very strong read. What happens if uh, now we have a, a, small, uh, a weaker read, for example, a short circuit ratio equal to, to two? Well, we will have the damping. Uh, sorry, the damping is not equal to one anymore, but we have uh, this oscillation are still acceptable, acceptable for the for the grid. So it's uh, even if it's not the good damping, it's it, it can be considered as as uh, good enough. I would say to to uh, use that for the for the control. Since we have an inertial effect, it's interesting also to test the system with a frequency, a variable frequency. So what we are doing here is, um, you see here, is to use um, a system uh, with also an inertial effect. Well, it's, it mimics the, um, the, the frequency behavior of a very large grid. And when uh, modifying the TN and TD, we can modify the nadir of the system. So we have a frequency, a variable, a possible variable frequency. If I, I as soon as I modify the load, then of course the frequency will be modified. So uh, we can see here what happened. Uh, the load is applied, and we see the frequency which is modified, and then the inertial effect, which is delivered by the grid formula, which is quite expectable, of course. So um, now uh, again we have the two CC and, and VC. So if we have a, a zoom in the very beginning here, we see that there are a very, very small difference, but uh, really we have to, to make a very uh, strong zoom to see the difference between VC and CCGFM on the, this behavior. So uh, we can see that the behavior is nearly the same and really with no effect on the frequency because it's so so um, similar to that we can have we cannot have any effect on the frequency of the system so the conclusion of this part we have uh, there are various type of power sequence control i of course the aim of this uh, presentation is not to list uh, all uh, the different type we just mentioned root control pi control i could have uh, mentioned VSM, but it is similar to uh, this PI control. And uh, we have tested this control uh, for VCGFM, CCGFM, and we have seen that, in fact, the dynamic behavior seems to be similar. Now, uh, we want to deepen the analysis to highlight the uh, fundamental difference between both controls. So, um, in fact, um, uh, we know that the grid forming control brings numerous services to the electrical system. Inertial effect is very well known. It is possible to go for island-in application. And also one very important uh, service to the system is to enhance the system the stability of the system. So now this uh, the second part of the uh, the presentation is dedicated to the question of system stability, 
and how the grid farming can enhance this system stability. Because we always say grid farming is not very good uh, in, grid, uh, in case of wood grid. Let's switch to grid farming. But really, uh, how our grid farming uh, is um, is enhancing uh, this, uh, uh, this stability. So we want to go in a very deep analysis, very precise analysis. So we'll uh, start from a very simple benchmark, which is proposed only two converters to quantify to which is in which extent the grid forming control is bringing stability. In fact, we could use a very basic uh, Thévenin equation, but in fact, the problem that, that we can have with that is, is that the main power flow is uh, is uh, going through the impedance. And of course, if we want to decrease the short ratio, we increase this impedance, and then we can reach stability limit, uh, uh, static limit, sorry, before the new limits. So uh, uh, it's not very good to use this, um, this uh, um, benchmark and also, if we want to study the interaction between two converters, of course, we need at least two converters. So what we are going to do to use here is to use this scheme where you have two converters here and a voltage source here. And then we are modifying LG, the impedance of the, of the disconnection here. We increase that to modify the short electric ratio. So here, while we have a, a low, uh, impedance, so we have no uh, stat static uh, limit. There is no risk of static limit. Here, the current is nearly nil, so even if we have a very large impedance, there is no risk of static limit either. So this is the. Yeah. So now what we are going to do is to start from this uh, system, which is going to be considered our, as a reference system, where we have two grid following kind of a converter. And then we increase again the impedance. And we will reach the stability limit. This is the what is the so-called um, reference case. On the other hand, we will have, well, we still keep grid following. We always keep grid following on, a, on, a, on VS, VSC1. And then we will test the two uh, type of uh, grid forming that I've uh, defined before, voltage control grid forming or um, current control grid forming. And the question is, does it bring really more stability? So uh, here, here are the parameters of the simulation of the system that I will use uh, now. Well, it is uh, for high voltage application, so we can neglect the resistance. Um, well, you have the uh, old, uh, I would say, a classical uh, here. Uh, well, if we have one gigawatt and the uh, Qmax is uh, 300 megabar, we have the 0 0.15 per, per unit uh, connection dependence. And uh, well, anyway. So, um, on the grid for uh, grid following, first I didn't uh, speak uh, about the grid uh, grid uh, following scheme. Well, I recall uh, very quickly. Uh, we we know that we have a current loop here. Uh, I have also integrated the delay here to take into account the de delay of the control here. The delay is quite large. We know that well, it's a little bit conservative. Well, it's linked with a. Uh, it could be could find that for a two. Two kilohertz uh, switch in time for the converter. Well, anyway, well, it's a parameter. We we'll mod modify the parameters, of course. Um, we have uh, well the outer loop for the active power control and also for the voltage control with a troop uh, the reactive group here. And of course, we need this PLL very well known PLL for the uh, for the to synchronize the system to the. To the well, we have designed the, 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 the controller and uh, to get a kind of optimal behavior, either in small cell stability or also large functions. But uh, we'll see that, of course, we have some, uh, again, some uh, limit of stability. So, uh, well, about the VCGFM, we all, uh, already uh, introduced. Uh, so I recall the, uh, that we have this uh, 
PA controller and uh, all the scheme here to apply also this delay here. Well, we have uh, this H equal to five, then T equal to one, and we have used um, a transmitter virtual resistance, and then this is too much about that. Uh, and then on the CCGFM, we have uh, again exactly the same scheme, but I remember, I recall you the quasi static uh, model that is needed to define ID and IQ. And from that, we have the same, uh, the kind, the same uh, current loop as uh, for the grid fuller. So, um, for this system, we have uh, developed a linear system. From, well, this is similarly the system. Here is the linear system. And of course, we have checked the accuracy, which is a very good accuracy, of uh, the linear system compared with the non-linear non -linear, uh, system, non-linear model, sorry. So you see that uh, this uh, linear, linear system is very accurate. We have to adjust uh, this system to uh, to the operating point because it is non-linear, but we, everything is going well uh, in terms of accuracy. So, um, so uh, here is here is the here are the the results. Uh, so, uh, when we have well, here is the stability limit of different set of when when we have two grid following converter, we reach the stability limit for one. 0.82 per unit. It means one over L is uh, the shorted ratio. Shorted ratio is one one point twenty two. We see that if we switch to current control good foreign, we'll reach the stability limit. We have increased L, it means that the shorted ratio is smaller, as you see here, 0, 0 0.7, but we still reach stability limit. If we switch to VCGFM, there is no stability limit. So it's true that CCGFM improve, but VCGFM improve better. Yeah. So um, we have done also um, an identification of the most sensitive eigenvalue of the setup for LG equal to 0 0.7. So if we have LG equal to 0 0.7, it means that all the controls are stable. So we have this critical eigenvalue. So we see that again uh, the same idea. We have a better damping with a VCGFM than with a CCGFM. And what is interesting also is to see the participation factor. We see that uh, well, if we have two uh, grid following, well, uh, this is the the participation factor for the grid, and uh, there is a mix between GFL and uh, and the grid. You see that here with the participation factor really. There is no connection between uh, grid forming and uh, uh, the grid. And with CCGFM, we see that uh, there are some connection between uh, that and more, more um, interaction, in fact, uh, in, uh, with the CCGFM. Then. So, uh, a last uh, result, the simulation results here, we see <coughs> we're again at the limit of stability. So, you see the grid following here. And you see that the grid for, for the VC grid forming is here. This is very stable, and we have al already uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, oscillation on CCGF. We have done a uh, pi over forty phase jump at the voltage source, and uh, so now uh, what we can do also is to add a, a load here. So the the scheme is not the same now. We are providing the, the load, the, the, the power to the load. So as expected, the load is damping the system, of course. And we see that, in fact, uh, the behavior of VCGFM and CCGFM are uh, closer than uh, the resistive load dampens the system and uh, bring uh, GFM control dynamic closer. Um, uh, we have also uh, studied uh, another scheme, very simple. The idea is to split uh, the two <coughs> converters here, the, the one converter and two converters, where well, a, a given percentage of CCGFM or VCGFM, and here is still we keep uh, GFM. So, in fact, for example, you can imagine that it is uh, uh, 
uh, wind farm, uh, for example, I would say, okay, there are only X percent of the wind farm which will be engaged for me, and one minus X percent will be good, which stay in grid follow. So, um, question is what is the share of converter to switch to grid to GFM in order to stabilize the system? So, uh, this result is quite interesting here because we see that for X equal to 20, you see that the system with VC GFM is very stable, whereas the system with CC GFM is quite uh, oscillatory. So we see that a, a better performance again of the VC GFM to stimulate the system, but much better than the CC GFM. Well, we have done also some uh, studies on this benchmark with uh, four uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> for VSC. So you see here we have uh, two HVDC lines here. We have two uh, two wind park, two wind, uh, and with uh, here this is the equivalent uh, system as I already presented with the uh, Tevnin equivalent here, and we have put a. Uh, uh, a load here just to absorb all the, the converter. So it's possible to increase, to modify the impedance here with no problem of static limit as, uh, as explained previously here. So uh, you see here that in fact, well, most of the, all the power which is coming from the, from the wind turbine are going either to the HVDC uh, one or two or in the load. So um, all the VLCs are with following co co control, except this one, which can be again split uh, in uh, two GFL and GFM. Uh, yes, uh, so I already explained that, uh, and we are applying an, an event here line outage of AC. So what happened? You see here that. Uh, for a given value of uh, shortest power, nearly 18 gigawatt, uh, gigavolt ampere, uh, when we switch uh, the wind park to GFM mode, we have an enhancement of the stability, clearly. This is result with GFM, here with GFM, and we see that in fact GFM, the two GFM are nearly the same. But we can go further, since uh, we suppose that now we are in GFM, uh, CC GFM, we, have, we see that in fact we reach a limit of stability with CC GFM to 8 gigawatts. And what is interesting here is to see that here you see that there are the limits of stability. And now if we switch that to GFM, we are much more stable. So controlling the uh, wind, wind park in VC GFM bring more stability than with CC GFM, and we can go further till 1.3 gigawatts and this is a limit of stability when we have only one uh, wind park in grid following or it forming and all the other uh, in, in grid uh, in grid following so uh, we have done uh, many other uh, studies here uh, with that uh, we have done uh, that um, MMC, uh, VSC plus LC filter, uh, and we have the same trend. Uh, we, we obtain the same results. Of course, the parameters are the same, but uh, uh, big question here uh, is uh, well, we, we claim, in fact, that the v VC GFM is bringing much more stability than the CC GFM. But of course, we are aware that the system that we have studied are very, very simple. So uh, we can say that this conclusion is highly questionable. Uh, since we have this, uh, we are aware that it's not a mathematical demonstration. The system are very simple. So very big question is, are there representative enough or more realistic system? So is this conclusion uh, consistent for larger system? So, I uh, propose some elements of answer to, to this question. In fact, we know that in a given bandwidth, we can assimilate 
this converter to a voltage source converter. Sorry, a uh, voltage in a series with an impedance in case of grid forming converter. But when you have either grid following or current control grid forming, due to the current loop, in this same bandwidth, we will have a current source here. So then, in fact, the simplifier, very simplified model, in the given bandwidth where when there is a risk of instability, we could have uh, assimilated this system to, uh, you see, the association of two uh, current sources, impedance in the middle. And then in, when I increase LG, it is as if I had no voltage source. Uh, voltage source is going further and further. So in fact, of course, if we improve the control of uh, current control with forming or GFL, we can modify the value when you, where we will reach the limit of stability. But I, my I, uh, uh, idea is that we will always uh, find a, a limit of stability. On the other hand, when you have, uh, so yes, of course, if you have a resistance, then this resistance is allowed in dumping road, it will help to decouple uh, the, the system, but it may be quite risky to be sensitive to this type of load for the stability, considering that this type of load is expected to decrease in the future. So we cannot rely on the load to stabilize the system, obviously not. So uh, when we switch now to uh, a voltage source here, so sorry, it's a VCGFM here, then of course, we will bring stability much more stability due to the characteristic of the voltage source. We don't need, we doesn't need any control to adjust its current in case of suspension. So you see here between this scheme with a current source, well, you when you have a transient, you have to adjust the current with the control. Whereas here, uh, when we have a voltage source, of course, you have a natural behavior, which is totally different. And we can explain why we have more stability with the real voltage source than with the voltage. So real voltage source, VCGFM, better than with the current control, the CCGFM. So um, the conclusion of the conclusion, I would say here, that the concept behind grid forming is to form the grid voltage, the grid voltage, or in other words, to generate the voltage waveform and to behave as a voltage source. So, in fact, what we have seen is that current control GFM is using the concept of poor synchronization control method, poor synchronization method. We have seen that it brings bring stability, but the big question is, should we classify CCGFM in the grid forming control category? Is it really forming the control when you have a current loop? Of course, if I have spoken about that, it's because we know that there are lots of interest industrial uh, control which are using uh, current control or this kind of uh, current control uh, with forming. So we think that uh, in terms of st uh, stability, you can gain bring stability, but not as much as uh, voltage control uh, with forming. So I am reaching uh, now the, the end of my presentation. So uh, I wanted to thanks uh, my PhD, Ramran is he does his presentation is part of his PhD, and also uh, I wanted to to thank RTG, which which is a French uh, transmission system operator, and which is uh, funding this uh, PhD, and also I wanted to to thank all the supervising team uh, of this PhD, as you as you can see the the list here. So um, this work. Part of the work is submitted for publication, so you can find it if you want on the car archive, as you can see here. And this is the, the end of our presentation. And uh, thank you for your attention. OK, so thank you so much, Xavier, for this nice presentation, so, which is very clear to me. 
So I think now we are at the 